God is good. All the time, God is good. I want, I want to invite the Hope Kids, and, Hope Kids come in and go, go follow Miss Veronica for your special time. Okay? All right. As they are going, I realize um, how God orchestrated all the things. Almost every single time I'm amazed how God does that. You know, um, it wasn't until last night I was settled on the text for today's message. And, and uh, Debbie didn't know I was going to speak out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. But this morning when she was praying, as she was prepared, prepared for a time of prayer this morning, she prayed about Philippians chapter 4, verse um, 6 to 9, as if God was orchestrating all things together. And he was. God is good all the time. Once I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that was finished once and for all. As far as being assured of it, there have been times that when I needed a little more assurance. But as for, as for uh, learning what it means to be saved and trusting in Jesus Christ as my Savior, one time was sufficient. But we, we all know most of the pra practical lessons we have to live by in this life. Often, sometimes, we have to learn it over and over and over and over and over and over again. You didn't know when I would stop, right? Even when we think, when, when we got it down just perfectly right, something will come along that will test our understanding, test our faith, and test our ability to live out what we know. Today's passage we want to look at, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13, is a passage, a portion of a letter Apostle Paul wrote to church in Philippi. And this was a letter he wrote because he was thanking them for helping him and bringing help for his ministry while he was in house arrest in Rome. So in this, in this passage, what you want to look at today is some of the important principles, important affirmations about what God is saying in our life, how, need, how we need to live as people of God. Let's come to God in prayer. Father, we come today. Father God, we come this afternoon before you as your sons and your daughters. Oh God, we look to you. We come today not as just a some religious activity, not just a time to meet, but we come to see your face. We come to encounter you as people of God together. Father God, that we may worship you, may honor you, that you will be glorified in our mess, that we may become more and more like you as we behold you, God. So come. I ask Holy Spirit, come and will you even take the words that you put in my mouth to come forth in power? Can you, will you make it concise and clear? Father, we ask, will, will you open our ears to hear what you're saying to us, God? We want to see your face. We want to know you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The title of the message is The Secret of Contentment. The passage is from... Okay. Oh, my goodness. Let me do this. Okay. Text is from uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. Let me just read it once. As I mentioned, this is a part of, portion of the letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. This is almost a chapter, the last chapter, chapter 4 of this four chapters long letter that he wrote. It is, all, I think, I believe this is the climax. It is the probably apex of this letter. Powerful and very personal section of the passage that Paul wrote by the Spirit of God to the church in Philippi. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last 
You have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you are concerned before, but you lack opportunity. But I rejoice in the Lord. Okay, okay, so I read that again. Not that I speak from one, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I, I know how to get along, get along in humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both are having abundance and suffering need. Verse 13. I can do all the things through him who strengthens me. I know we know this verse very well. This chapter 4, verse 13. I know many people quote it. Hopefully today, as you look at this portion of the past, portion of Philippians, that you will get a, grant, get a greater appreciation of what God is saying to us and the powerful word for us. For some people, contentment means having what I need in life. And some people, contentment means that my relationships are right so that my emotion is satisfied. Contentment is freedom from worry and frustration about unfulfilled desires in my life. So but I, don't, I don't think, maybe some of you, but maybe, but I don't think any of us have gotten to a place, arrived at a place where that we are never worried about anything, that we are never frustrated about anything in life, or have never, have no concerns whatsoever. I don't think, have you, maybe some of you have come to that place. I surely haven't. I have not. In fact, if you are Christian, if you are Christian, if you are and, and trying to follow God and, and, and live as God wants to live, you are going to be concerned about some things genuinely because God is going to put Concerns in your heart. Yes, we, uh, so I believe that we have concerns in our hearts. But here we are talking about, we are really concerned about frustrations, anxieties that come as a result of not being genuinely content in what we are and what we have, what we're experiencing. Look what Apostle Paul says in verse uh, 11. I have, 12, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. He says he has learned to be content. He has learned the secret in ever-changing circumstances which he has no control. In those times, he can be content. You see, as long as we feel we are in, in control, as long as we feel we are in control, we don't have to be worried or frustrated. It is when things are out of control, when we cannot change them, when we cannot do anything about them, that's when we feel, when we are out, when we feel out of control, that is when we are frustrated and worried and concerned and angry, even angry. And so what I want to do today is, as you look at this passage, I want to share some of the things that Apostle Paul is speaking to us about contentment. That, and next time when, when next time when you're discontent, restless, and frustrated, you may ask yourself, "Is this true in my life?" Let me make a statement here. My contentment is not and cannot be governed by my circumstances. Look at what Apostle Paul says in this passage, chapter 4, verse 11. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. And also in verse 12, he says, and, and I highlighted some things here, I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity. I highlighted blue and pink to highlight some things which is difficult, some things which is 
favorable. In any and every circumstance, I have learned to learn the secret of being filled and going hungry. Both of having abundance and suffering need. You see, contentment cannot be based on my circumstances, how things are going, and what's, what's outside. If that's the case, then you know what? We know this. We will have, we will be immediately will have a problem. Because we all face issues, circumstances in, in our life, in our work, even in our homes, among our children, although my children are perfect, they never give me any trouble whatsoever. I'm not lying. Yes, I am. Or in situations in our relationships where we have no control over or we cannot do anything about, we know this is true. If our contentment is based upon what's outside, what's happening outside, we are going to have issues. We're going to have a problem. We're going to face problems. If my contentment is based on anything outside of myself, I instantly have problems. This is why most people are discontent, not content. And Apostle Paul says, I learned a secret. It is not, ne it is not never not feeling it. It's not that I'm not going to feel some of these things, but it's about how we respond to it, isn't it? Second thing I want to mention here is this. I guess you're helping me in the back. It is uh, this contentment needs to be governed. It, it is to be governed by the decisions, the responses I make on inside, not the things outside, but inside the decision, the choices I make, responses I make in my heart. It should be based on those things. You know, and the, the, the decisions that I make when things come. Let me say quickly four things that I actually learned from uh, Pastor uh, Charles Stanley from In Touch Ministries. He says, first of all, see, when things that I can handle and, and situations come, number one, I choose to see this as from God. I see this as from God. Otherwise, we, we end up blaming somebody or something else. So in that time, in that place, God, I say, God, God, I'm going to accept this as coming from you. Either you programmed it into my life, or you allowed it in my life, or you executed it, or you are, or you are the cause behind it, whatever it is, I am going to accept it as from you. Sometimes what happens in our life is that well, sometimes what happens in my life is not what God sent. Listen carefully. Sometimes what happens in my life is not what God sent. God could have stopped it if he wanted to. God could, have, God could change anything and every circumstance that is going around me if he chooses to. If he does not choose to change it, God, I choose to see it from you. But this is important to think about it. Think about you know, and, and so we need to consider, understand. And this is the most powerful aspect of learning to have content, be content in my life. Accept God, I see it as from you. I see it as from you. You know what? Sometimes often I don't like it. Often I just have to say, God, I look to you. I thank you and trust in you that you are behind this, the source of this is you. No matter what I see, what I hear, I'm looking to you and thanking you. There I also acknowledge that God is omnipotent, that he is omniscient, that he has the power to change it. Anytime he chooses it, then I don't feel helpless or hopeless. Then I don't feel like a victim of my circumstances. But I am a living child of God, watched over by God, cared for by God, guided by God through a difficult circumstance which God saw fit to allow. 
if I can make this decision, that I choose to see this from God, whatever circumstances I, I am in, this is the essence and the center of all my contentment. Amen? Amen? Number two, to get this. And the second decision I, I, I need to make is not only that I see it from God. Number two, I decide to submit to God as this is from God. What is, what is, uh, what is the alternative to this? And if, if not submission, what is alternative? Rebellion, right? You don't want to rebel against God's will, what God is doing, God allows in my life. Sometimes when Sometimes, when I don't like the things that's coming, sometimes I don't like the things that's happening in me. Don't fake it. Don't just go and say, God, I thank you. All that, you know, just be honest. Say, God, I don't like this. It's painful. Be honest. Just say, God, I don't like this one. But I see it from you. So I choose to submit to you, God. You see, Christian life is practical about things God teaches us. Do you believe in Romans 8.28? Or do you not believe in Romans 8.28? It says, God works together. God works all things together for good to those who love him, who are called by his name. If I believe that he, if, if I believe Romans 8.28, then I, first of all, I decide to accept this is coming from God. Secondly, I submit because I know he has my best interest in his heart. And he is going to engineer my circumstances in what he knows best for me. I don't have to like it. I don't have to fret. Third, first, seed from God. Secondly, submit to the God, God, submit to it as uh, submit to God as is from God. Third, trust God that He knows what is best for me. When I when I come and say, I see this as coming from you, God. I am trusting that you know what is best for me. Then I don't have real basis for being frustrated. When I when I take my eyes off from God. I begin to slide and fall away. I get frustrated and wonder what's going on. All I have to do really is keep be reminded that, Lord, I know what is going on. God, you know what is going on. You are allowing this. I choose to submit again to you. I choose to trust you that I am your child. That you, that you are working in my life, your plan. I may not like it, but I'm trusting you to work out your plan. Therefore, I can rest in that. Fourth thing. I must learn to draw from God, from him, as quickly as possible, instantly. Within him, from him, for my innermost being. I need to learn to draw instantly from God. God, you know what I am thinking, how I feel, who I am, what I like. I draw from you. Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 7. He says, He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of, the, of living water. His, Jesus said, in you, in, 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 from my innermost being will flow the living water, rivers of living water. He's just talking of the Holy Spirit, which was given to all those who trust in Christ. Holy Spirit was living in us. The river of life, river of living water is flowing out of us, in us. So we draw in those situations as we see it from God, see it from God, as we submit to it, submit to God as is, is being from God, and trusting God to help. And now I learn to draw from Him. Within Holy Spirit God who lives in me, draw from Him the help I need the joy I need, the strength I need. 
I learned to draw from him. You see, all I have as a child of God is within me because of the Spirit of God who is given to me as living in me because of the presence of God that is in me. And often we don't feel like it, but he is, this is the truth, he lives in us. And this is what, Jesus, uh, what Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 3 says, according to, to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that you ask or think, according to the power that works within us. According to the power that works within us. I see everything goes, I, I see everything that goes on in my life is from him. And I submit to him that he knows best. And I trust my life is in his hand. Then I draw from him. Draw from, draw from him out of my innermost being what I need for that moment. Then I'm, then I'm going to be able to live my life in contentment. Even in most difficult circumstances. Let me go back. Remember he said, we said, uh, my contentment is not or cannot be governed by my circumstances. Secondly, it, it, it has to be governed by my decisions that I make on inside. The thirdly says, con, uh, con, con, contentment is learn to be experienced, not something given. Listen, contentment is not something given, some supernaturally. It is something to, to also something to be learned from. Something and, and, you know, and not just given, but something that we learned from. Let me go back to uh, Philippians, our text. Look at what it says, chapter 4, verse 11. Look at this. I highlighted that just for you so you can look at it clearly. Okay? What a nice pastor that I am, right? So you can see. Not that I speak from one, but I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am. And next verse he says, thank you. Thank you, guys. I know how, how, I, know, I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have, I have, learned, the, I have learned the secret. Remember he says, I have learned twice in two verses. He says, I have learned. It is not some, it's, it's, it's not, it's not like where God says, Paul, this is the definition of contentment. You got it? Go live it out. He, he, that's not what he's saying. It's not, it's not often, it's not that God says, his contentment, receive it. That's just yours, not that. Contentment is something that she opposed the person that I have learned it. I have learned to be content. How did he learn? How did he learn to be content? By failing. By failing, right? We learn by going through things. I, you know, this passage like this one in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 really, really rocks my heart. Makes me wonder at this man of God who loved the Lord. Look what it says. He talks about his uh, journey. Three times I was be beaten with rods. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I had spent in the, in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. Then it says, I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. You see, this is some, a lot of things he went through. In the midst of all these things, he said, I've learned to be content. Somehow, we as, as Christians, as children of God, we rather that God somehow supernaturally give it to us. We, 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 this is what we want. But some, God says some things, as you live, as you live God wants us to have it by we learning it, by working with him. This is what 
uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 9, the prayer is about. He said, you know, do not be anxious for anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let your request be known, made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, regards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He says, when you pray, God's peace comes. Next verse, verse 8, verse, verse 7, and at seven and at 8 and 9, he says, finally, bring whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's anything excellent, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Verse 9, it says, the things you have heard, heard, learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The Apostle Paul talks about both. There are things where God gives you when you pray, you ask. But there are things we learn by obeying and dwelling and, and following him. This is what Apostle Paul is saying. Having the, talked about the peace, he says, now I have learned to be content. Content is not only being free of those things. It is about being satisfied. I'm satisfied every, in every circumstance in my life. That's what he says. I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret. Be, not only be satisfied in whatever circumstance I am, are you? Are you satisfied? A pause, a pause saying, I have learned to be to the, the secret. I've learned. He learned it by the life. And I, this was in my, in my note. I think about this, right? Even our Lord, Bible says in Hebrews, that even our Lord learned to obey obedience, uh, learned by obe the, uh, the obedience. But when Jesus, on the night before, goes to the cross, he prays until the he's drops of what they call, sweat becomes like tears. Uh, the, uh, the drops of uh, what they call, sweat become like a blood. Right? He prays, God, not my will, but your will be done. I don't like this. Jesus had to die on the cross. God, I don't like this. You know, but not my will, but your will be done. He, Jesus, learned obedience by... Oh, that doesn't, doesn't sound right. He learned to honor God by obedience. He did this. And he even, and he walked through this thing. Think about Apostle Paul, in, 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 even in the, in, in the prison in, Philipp in Philippi, where he was beaten and put in a jail, and at midnight he is singing to God. In the circumstance, you are learning to rejoice and look at God. He has learned. I bet you that many times when he grumbled, when, he, when it was difficult for him to rejoice in it, but he learned over the time. And, and, and space of time and experiences, how to be content and satisfied in God. So what is a secret? What is a secret? You remember he said, I have learned the secret. What is a secret? What do you think is a secret? Look, look, at, look at the verse. It says in verse 13, the first part, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. And then he said, what is the secret? Verse 13, I can do all things through, literally means in, him, which is Christ, who strengthens me. As simple as this. His secret of contentment is, I, you know, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's the secret. I can do all things. That, that, you know, often we use a verse wrongly. We think, that, we think that means God categorically saying, I can do whatever, whatever I wish when, because God is strengthening me. That's not true. That's not what he's saying here. You have to understand this verse, this truth, in kind of context of what God is saying here. The context is, a post verse, I learned to be content in every circumstance. That's what he mean by all things I can do. He said, I know how to be satisfied in, when I'm facing death. I know how to be satisfied when things are good. Now, I need to, this isn't my note, I need to throw something at you. 
This is the important thing. I, 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 I need to I just think of, consider this. Sometimes we think, sometimes we need to learn to be content even in prosperity. Sometimes we think that prosperity equals contentment. That's not true. You need to learn to be content even in prosperity because Apostle Paul says in a number of places, often prosperity brings temptations for you new that hinders you from being content in God. The temptation to be proud, temptation to be self-sufficient, temptation to, temptation to you know, deny God. You need to learn to be content even in prosperity. That's not in my note, but let me go back. What is the secret? I can do all things. In Christ, that's the secret. In Christ. In Christ. The reason I say this passage is the climax of whole Philippians is that in whole Philippians, Apostle Paul talks about how in chapter 1 he says, you know what, I'm in prison. My circumstances actually turn out to be the, for the greater progress of the gospel, therefore, it's I am. I can, ex- I can celebrate it. I can rejoice in this place. And he says, also chapter 1, he says, I'm, I'm, I do not know whether I will live or die. I may die. I may be crucified. I, I, I may be killed. I may be executed. He says, for me to live is Christ. And he says, you know, and, says, you know, I, you know, and, and then he goes on to say, chapter 3, And chapter 3 says, uh, she said, you know, more than anything, more than, more than that, I consider all things to be lost in the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, I, I, want, I want to know Christ so much more that I consider all the things which are good to me as nothing, even all things as nothing, even consider as dung. Okay, dung. Okay, uh, poop. Yes, a, a, a joke went through my mind. I, I'm not going to tell the joke. Whew. Forget the joke. Okay. I'll tell you. If you ask me later, I'll tell you. Anyway. And so that I may gain Christ, it says. And verse, and as he says, and verse 10, he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. He said, I want to know Christ. I want to know his power of resurrection. I also share in his sufferings. Being conformed to his death. I want to, I want to even die, even, even com, com, conform to his death, even die, so that I may, I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Whole chap, whole Philippian is saying, I is about being in Christ. My life is about focus on Christ. My life is about following Christ. I see the value of Christ, value of Christ Jesus in my life. Everything else com, compared to it means, doesn't really compare anything. It's nothing. He's focused on who Christ is. This is, this is why it says, so what then, in chapter 1 it says, what then? In every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. In this I rejoice. The fact that Christ is proclaimed, because even though I'm in this situation, I will rejoice. It's about Christ. It's about God, he says. A couple other things I mentioned uh, And you know, this one, I think this is one of Pastor Mim's favorite passage. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, but reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the, of the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on to know him more. That's Apostle Paul's goal. This is what um, D.A. Carson, one of the New Testament scholars, said. His contentment is focused on all that he enjoys in Christ. Ultimately, not only, in the, not only it depends on the response I make, the decision I make, but all it's really about what am I focused on, what am I setting my heart to be content about. He's the Apostle Paul for him. His contentment was on Christ Jesus. I do not know a lot about Nesca, but I want to quote a Nesca driver, Jeff Gordon. I think he's retired, but he's, I, I believe he has uh, won a number of times, and he is famous. I heard he's a famous Nesca driver, right? Okay. He said, he says, he's t- talking, about, talking about how, you know, a, a, as a driver driving over 200 miles an hour with, with 40-some other cars racing together, 
So what, and what do you do? I said, this is what he said. Either you focus or you hit something really hard. You know, it's like, unless you, either you focus, really focus, or you hit something really, really hard. This is true in life as people of God. If I am focused on Christ for who he is, what he has done for me, what he is doing in my life, if I take my eyes off, I will hit something big, something really hard. Apostle Paul, he has learned that my contentment in my life, the thing that matters most for me is Christ, that he is Glory, his name, who he is, how he loves me, what he has done for me. Those things are what makes me content and satisfied. Other things compared to it, nothing. Yes, we do need, yes, our contentment should be based upon the decisions I make in my life, how I respond, not the circumstances, but also ultimately my secret of true contentment in God as a child of God, as I am focused on Christ, that I may know him, that I may know him. In whatever place I am, whatever circumstance I am, that I'm look, I look to you, O oh God. I look to you, O oh God. Are you looking at Christ? Are you trusting in him? Are you waiting on him? Maybe your eyes were a little bit off of him now. You are maybe sliding off, frustrated, wondering, God, what's going on? Bring it back. Come and put your focus on who he is. Just, as, just, like, just like Peter. Only other man, only man who walked on water other than Jesus. When, he, when Jesus said, come, he obeyed, he, got on the, he began to walk on water, I don't know how many steps, hopefully more than one. Hopefully more than one. And when he, when, but when he, began, when he took his eyes off Jesus, when he saw the waves and the wind, he began to sink. When he had his eyes on Christ, he was able to walk on water. Is your, eye, your eyes on him? Are your eyes on him? Has he been a little bit off? What have you been focusing on? What have you been looking on? Focus on Christ. Focus on Christ. Let him be your ultimate satisfaction and contentment. Let him be your joy. Let him be your strength. Isn't that what Apostle Paul is saying? That I may gain Christ. I may know him. I, may, I, I even want to suffer like Christ did so that I may attain to his resurrection. I want everything he has for me. Not only good things, or even the difficult things. I want everything that Christ has for me. This is why he went through all the things he learned to be content in Christ. Are you satisfied in him? Are you content in him? Maybe today you need to refocus your eyes on him, who is the head, who is the source of all of our life. Are you discontent? Are you frustrated? Are you rocked and stirred by the things happening around you? Do you need to come back to put your focus on him? It's time, isn't it? I like the quote, either you focus or you hit something very hard. Let's come. Let's sing our praise together. Let's lift our eyes, look to our God. You need to hear the good news here. Apostle, God speak, God speaks to us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, to all of us, ordinary people. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens it's not because he is Apostle Paul is a super duper Christian. No, he learned to, to be content. So all of us can learn. All of us are invited in this. We have in, in the Holy Spirit of God who is in us, 
And God living in His presence, we have everything we need to live this life as God wants us to live. Amen. Amen. That's His invitation. That's His invitation. Therefore, we will say, "I can be content in whatever circumstances I am, because in Christ who strengthens me." That's our invitation. God's invitation to you. If you are Discontent, frustrated, discombobulated. I want you to know: no matter what may be, it may be your children, it may be your spouse, it may be your parents, it may be your coworkers, it may be things around you. I want you to know: our God is at work. God is with us, even in those circumstances. I'm. I can. I. And learn, and will be able to be satisfied in God, be content in God, because He is with us. Amen. I want to invite you, those in worshiping with us in online, and and we will have time of ministry. If you need some prayers, you need some encouragement, especially word of prayer in regarding to discontentment, frustration, and dealing with in your life. Join us. Uh, Pastor Mimi and others will be in there, really ready to pray with you. And all of you, all of you here as well. If you need any prayer, you just need God's touch here, a fresh touch, encouragement. If that is you, I want you to invite and remain standing where you are. And pastors and leaders. Father, we love you. You are our God. We look to you. We look to you, O oh God. In whatever circumstances I am in, I am content and satisfied in you, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you are for me, knowing that you are working in my life. I submit, and I, Father God, trust in you. But I drew, we draw from you, oh, your strength and your wisdom and your grace, God. We love you. We say you are our God. We love you, God. We do pray right now, God, that we may see your face deeply in every part of our lives, God. We want to walk with you, Lord, you, God. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified and resurrected Lord. And the love of God the Father, communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be upon each and every person who is gathered here, who is worshiping God together, who is looking unto Him and trusting Him from now until forever and ever more. Amen. Amen.